it takes three hours to get to Washington. So why don't you look at your books or draw a picture or something? I got out my Electroman Advanced Plus. But just as I started a game, Fudge covered the screen with his hand. Will you take me back to the snack car now? If I do, will you leave me alone? Sure, Pete. I asked Dad for money. He reminded me not to get Fudge any candy, as if I needed reminding. He was already flying high. A banana would be good, Dad said, and a juice, not soda. The snack car was th three cars forward. Fudge had already learned to open the doors between the cars by kicking the open door plate at the bottom of each door. He liked the whoosh of air as he raced from car to car. This is so fun, Pete. I wish I could ride the train every day. We ride the subway, I reminded him. But there's no snack car on the subway and the seats aren't soft. And when you look out the window, it's all dark. That's because the subway is an underground train. Wow, Pete, I never knew that. Well, now you know. William says, learn something new every day. I snorted. William is smart, Pete. He's the smartest teacher in the world. Sure he is, I thought. Fudge got a banana and a juice box at the snack car. While I paid, Fudge peeled all the skin off the banana and shoved half of it into his mouth. His cheeks puffed out and he couldn't talk. His mouth was so full. He insisted on carrying the little cardboard box that he held the rest of his, and held the, that held the rest of his banana and his juice box. But on the way back from the snack car, the train swerved and Fudge lost his balance. He flew into the lap of a woman with a red suit and coughed out the gooey half-chewed banana all over her clothes. Get off me, she shouted. Someone get him off me. She shoved Fudge off her lap as if he were a slobbering dog or worse. Oh, she cried. Look what you've done. You've ruined my suit. She turned to the man across the aisle. Can you believe this? And I've got an appointment at the White House. Then she glared at Fudge, who was picking himself up off the floor. You know who lives at the White House? She asked him. The president, Fudge said. That's right. And I'm going to tell him exactly how I got the stains on my suit. She jumped up and marched to the rear of the car where there was a restroom. Tell him it was a banana, Fudge called, and tell him my name, too. It's Farley Drexel Hatchard, but he can call me Fudge. I grabbed him and pulled him back to our seats. No way was I ever taking him to the snack car again. When we finally got to Washington, our first stop was a tour at the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. That's where the green stuff is printed. There were about 20 other people in our group. Our tour guide's name was Rosie. She had dark eyes, reddish hair, and big teeth. Before our official tour began, Rosie told us some of what we'd be seeing during our tour. Fun facts, she called them. I decided to write her fun facts in my notebook in case any of my teachers ever assigned a report on U.S. currency. Fun fact number one, Rosie said. The Bureau of Printing and Engraving produces 37 million notes a day, worth about 697 million. Fudge raised his hand and asked, Are notes the same as bucks? Rosie told him they were. They're called bills, dollars, bucks. Some guy shouted out, How about moolah? A couple of people started. La or people laughed. A few more groaned. Well, yes, Rosie said. I suppose some people refer to money as moolah or even as dough. How about green stuff, Fudge 
shouted. That's what my grandma calls it. This time, almost everyone in our group laughed. Any minute, <clears throat> I thought Fudge would take a bow, but Rosie kept checking her watch and asked the group to hold their questions and comments until she was finished running through all of her fun facts. Then she led us through the metal detector. Fudge asked if we were getting on a plane. Rosie explained that we weren't, but because this is a federal building. They had to make sure no one was carrying a weapon. A weapon, Fudge said, right before Dad set off the alarm. Nobody would have paid attention except that Fudge shouted, Dad, are you carrying a weapon? That's got everyone's attention. It's his belt buckle, turkey brain, I said. Rosie took a deep breath and checked her watch. A couple of times she was still smiling but she didn't look that happy she led us down a long hallway we followed her single file through narrow corridors that twisted and turned the old wooden floor squeaked under us every few minutes we'd stop in front of the glass walls that looked down into the rooms where we could see the green stuff in production as the crowd pressed forward to the window wall, Fudge worked his way up front, wedging himself between people's legs if he had to, to get a better view. Then he waved to the workers in the rooms below. I heard him singing under his breath, Oh, money, 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 money. I love money, money, money. I couldn't believe my parents thought bringing him here was a good idea. We saw the green stuff as it was printed cut, stacked, and counted. Toward the end of the tour, Rosie invited Fudge to walk with her since he was so interested. I love money, he told her. Well, you've come to the right place, Rosie said. Want to see mine? He pulled out a jumble of fudge bucks. I make it myself. Pretty good, huh? Play money is fun, Rosie told him. As long as you don't try to use it or pass it off as real, because then you could get in big trouble. Why, Fudge asked. Because that's the rule, Rosie said firmly, which shut him up until the end of the tour. That's when Rosie asked our group if anyone had any special questions. Fudge's hands shot up first. Rosie didn't look thrilled, but she had no choice. She had to call on him. I still need to find out how you get a lot of it at once, Fudge said. A lot of... Rosie shout, sounded confused. Money, Fudge shouted. Mom stepped in and tried to explain. Fudge has become very curious about money, he, she told Rosie. And we thought that by bringing him here, I hear what you're saying, Rosie said to mom, but somebody has to set him straight. I'll set him straight, a tall man with a silver hair said. First of all, young man, you need to get a good education. Then when you're grown up, you need a good job. Then you save something from your salary every week. You invest carefully. You let your money work for you, and by the time you're my age, with luck, you'll have a nice little nest egg for your retirement. One group of 